Hi there everybody, I'm Jesse Kurtz in the Mountain West Network studio where it's once again time for the hot three and coincidentally that's the exact number of teams who are still alive for a spot in the 2020 Mountain West Championship game. To break down this week's pivotal games, it'll factor heavily into the equation for the championship matchup. We bring in our good friend Nate Kreckman, the host of the Mountain West Radio Network and also a sports talk show host in Denver, Colorado on 92.5 FM Altitude Sports Radio. Nate, great to see you again. Thanks for jumping on. Always a pleasure, Jesse. Let's do this. Let's go. Let's start with hot topic number one, San Jose State. The Spartans' path to the championship is pretty simple. They beat Nevada, and they're in. They're playing some great football right now as well, having beat Hawaii on Saturday, 35-24, after a two-week absence due to COVID-19 issues with opponents. Right now, Nate, San Jose State is one of nine FBS teams who remains undefeated. What will the key be to beating Nevada and securing a spot in the 2020 championship game? Yeah, Jesse, let's just take a minute to celebrate what San Jose State has done so far this season from training camp at Humboldt State to going 5-0 and wins at San Diego State at Hawaii which that Hawaii game was supposed to be at home last week. They make the midweek pivot, uh, and then they go out and they play great at Aloha Stadium in their first game in three weeks. Now they lose yet another home game, and they're going to play Nevada at Sam Boyd Stadium in Las Vegas. It's kind of become the Mountain West's home away from home this year. And, and the Spartans really are. They're one of the great stories in college football this season. Last week, the story for San Jose State, the run game. It's been okay for most of the season. It erupted in Hawaii. Tyler Nevins, Kyrie Robinson combined a rush for 263 yards and three touchdowns. And while that was great, it's going to be difficult to recreate that performance here against the Wolfpack. Nevada is the fourth best rushing defense in the Mountain West as a group. They're only allowing, on average, 3.4 yards per carry. So I look at this matchup against Nevada on Friday night as a Nick Starkle game. He's going to have to play much better than he did against the Rainbow Warriors. He's the highest rated passer in the conference. He has those great weapons, Gaither and Walker and Deese. Starkle has to rediscover his form to hang with Carson Strong on the other side. If he does, I think San Jose State has a great chance to win this game and to be playing for a Mountain West championship. Uh, the last time San Jose State started a season 6-0 was 1939. That year, they finished 13-0. On to hot topic number two, and the Nevada Wolfpack. Nevada, of course, stands in the way of the Spartans' perfect season and in the direct path to the championship game. The Wolfpack themselves can reach the title game with a win over the Spartans and a Boise State win. Of course, Nate, uh, Nevada showed a ton of heart in last Saturday's win over previously once beaten Fresno State. Carson Strong, career high five touchdown passes in the win. First to do that at Nevada since Colin Kaepernick did it back in 2010. What does Nevada need to do if they're going to be the first team to get the best of San Jose State? Again, Jesse, let's look back for a second. That Nevada Fresno State game was wild. Wasn't it? You mentioned how good Carson Strong was. Let's give some love to Jay Kaner. Threw for 485 yards and two touchdowns. Also kicked a couple of pooch punts. That's a valiant effort in the game where Fresno State is missing two starting offensive linemen. Their long snapper, their punter, their kicker, a safety uh, shout out to the Bulldogs. Now the Wolfpack, they just have to continue doing what they do. Throw the ball deep and score a bunch of points. Strong has had multiple touchdown passes in every single game this season. They'll need to do it again to outduel Nick Starkle. Um, after I picked Romeo Dubs for Offensive Player of the Year on this show two weeks ago, of course, Jesse, he's gone back-to-back -back games without finding the end zone, even though Torrey Horton emerged and caught three touchdown passes against Fresno State. Still, Nevada could really benefit from one of those big Romeo Dubs games. How about 140 and a score? And I think that goes a long way toward helping Nevada possibly upset the Spartans. 34th all-time meeting between Nevada and San Jose State will take place on Friday night, but the stakes have never been higher than 2020. CBS Sports Network will have the coverage starting at 7 o'clock p.m. Pacific time. 
on to hot topic number three and the Boise State Broncos. Boise State is getting geared up for a football game for the first time since November 21st. The Broncos are 4-0 in Mountain West play and they will earn a berth in a record fifth conference championship game with a win over Wyoming or a San Jose State win on Friday night. Nate, the Broncos have won 13 straight conference games. That is the second longest such streak in the country, second only to Ohio State when it comes to win streaks against conference opponents. The Broncos only lost in the previous 14 meetings with Wyoming came in 2016. What do you reasonably expect from the Broncos after two weeks off? Hard to say. Right, because we've seen these layoffs affect teams in different ways. San Jose State and Colorado State both had long layoffs, missed two games, and the Spartans and the Rams both went out last weekend and threw the ball for fewer than 200 yards. Their passing games were definitely out of rhythm. Then there was Fresno State last week. Yes, it was a loss to Nevada, but Hayner threw for just under 500 yards in that game. So who knows what to expect out of Hank Bachmeyer and the Broncos passing game. Also, let's not forget, and here's an important factor in this game, Jesse. Um, this game is going to take place December 12th in Laramie, Wyoming. Kickoff at 4 p.m. right as it's getting dark. So I broke out the trusty weather app on my phone telling me that Saturday night in Laramie, we should expect a low of four degrees. Four. So... The Broncos will be stepping into the freezer of War Memorial Stadium. Uh, Wyoming, their pass game is non-existent. Levi Williams really struggled last week against New Mexico. But the Cowboys did rush for 283 yards. They're the number two rushing offense in the entire Mountain West. And uh, lest we not forget, yes, Boise State, like you talked about, 13-1 and all time against Wyoming, but that lone loss came back in 2016 when they were a heavy road favorite in Laramie. Of course, this time around, Josh Allen is not about to walk through the door for the Cowboys still. I think this is a sneaky, tough game in a difficult situation here for Boise State. I think the Broncos win. I think they win a tough game. I think this one's close. Uh, should be a good one on the high plains of Laramie, Wyoming. Boise State and Wyoming will clash, as you said, Saturday afternoon, War Memorial Stadium in Laramie. Kickoff set for 4 o'clock Mountain Time on CBS Sports Network. Nate, appreciate your time and enjoy the final weekend of the regular season in the Mountain West. This one's going to be good. Thanks, Jesse. You bet. That's Nate Kreckman, our good friend. And those are your hot three for the final week of the regular season in the Mountain West. From the Mountain West Network Studio, I'm Jesse Curtis.